Hey everybody, Tracy Brown here. I hope you had a great weekend. And I'm here to just bring some reassurance and some hope that especially when you've um, just started intuitive eating, it can be really scary because the con it's almost like there's a container and the lid is lifted to all of the ways in which we use food and food rules and macro counting and all those things calorie counting points whatever to not only manage our food but to manage the sense of like you know I've got to be good and do it right and and that in, that in turn manages a whole other bunch of stuff that we may not know about which is why it's so scary because I think theoretically we know that like you know I'm not gonna actually eat pizza every meal all day long the rest of my life if I start eating a pizza again you might eat more pizza than you're used to eating because in diet land, either you don't eat pizza at all or you only eat one piece, right? With a salad and, you know, oil and vinegar and it's everything's very, um, like almost like pulling back on a horse as hard as you can on the, on the thing. You're like, you're really holding it back. So you can have it, but not, you know, as much as maybe would be satisfying. So at the beginning, I totally get it. And I was going to share with you a few stories of, of when I started intuitive eating without as much of the container of the book. Um, I didn't have that. So thank goodness that Evelyn and Elise wrote that book to help us have some guideposts to the process. In order to process, there's not like, okay, do X step and then you will get results in five minutes. It's, you know, for some people getting through that period of habituation of needing to eat what you need to eat to the level of fullness you need to get to so you can just, your brain can stop obsessing and your body could stop clawing at you to eat what you wanna eat, is, you know, that could, for some people, it's the shortest maybe three to six months. And for some people, it can take a couple years. I was um, probably more on the middle to longer end. I don't exactly remember for how many months, if it was, you know, a year and a half, probably something like that for me to really truly, um, and the reason, I'll tell you why that was in a second, but the, but to be able to fully like, okay, I feel like making biscuits for breakfast and you make them and you eat what you need of them. Not in a binging kind of way, but in like, okay, it took me like a biscuit and a half with some milk to be like, okay, I'm good and done. And with butter and jelly on it or whatever, I'm good and done. Versus, okay, I'm gonna have a half a biscuit and then the other rest of my meal needs to be a whole bunch of other stuff that's like lower calorie and then it's okay. None of that. It was like, I want to eat, or a cinnamon roll. I want to have a cinnamon roll for breakfast. What would be good with that to be satisfying? Maybe it's just that in a cup of coffee. Maybe it's that in milk. And I'm not saying that when you try these experiments that you're not going to have physiologic markers. Like, that works for me, or that makes me have heartburn, or that makes me nauseous, or it makes me whatever. That could totally happen. So that means you, you listen and honor to that. Sometimes, you may know that's going to happen, and you eat it anyway. And that's okay, too. We have to work through these periods where we allow ourselves to learn, but we're not doing it in a way of like, okay, I have to eat cinnamon rolls every morning because that's intuitive eating. Well, no, it means when you want it, you have it. And if you feel like it again in three or four hours because you're hung a little hungry again, then you do. Um, again, that's not the, this is not the hunger fullness diet, but it's definitely if it's kind of calling to you a little bit and you don't, it doesn't feel like it's just, I have to eat this because I don't want to deal with my life, that's a little different as well. So when we're talking about intuitive eating, we're not really always talking about doing the emotional decoding work with it, even though that's what I do. I know the book doesn't talk about it a lot, but I, I had this in combination. So anyway, the beginning might, like for me, for example, I'll talk about bagels. Like I did not let myself have bagels at all. And when I was like, you know, I'm going to have bagels and I'm going to have them as my meals and snacks as much as I need to. And that's what I did. And I went through probably three packs of Thomas bagels in a row before I'm like, okay, I don't really feel like having them at like two of my meals a day and all of my snacks a day. I'm, I kind of feel like I'm done. And learn how to, learning how to trust my body. I could wake up the next day and be hungry. Uh, my pants still fit the next day, whatever. Learning how to do that takes what it takes. So it could mean that you do that and you still eat them often and you maybe you still always have them in your house, but that doesn't mean that you eat them as much as you did at the beginning, okay? And so going back to what I mentioned, it took me probably a year and a half of doing that because I would do it 
And then I had to work through like some, you know, mo mental or emotional stuff around, well, what does that mean about me that I'm a person that just eats bagels whenever I feel like it? What kind of, you know, and at the time, you know, I'm still finishing up my degree, you know, for dietetics. I'm like, I'm not supposed to be, at the time, carbs are still fine back then, by the way. So it wasn't the, the mania and the, I mean, you know, I know of dietitians and students and interns that think that keto is perfectly fine for people who don't have any medical stuff and I'm like no that just contributes to disordered eating but anyway um but there wasn't that um concern so at the time I was just like okay eating that way and nobody knowing about it so there are going to be people who don't get what you're doing um and it's not really even in their business unless you decide to make it you know part of their um, awareness and understanding of what you're trying to do and that's a choice you can do that or not depending on how difficult, basically, you know, what your goal is and what you want to accomplish. But I would say still overall that let it be where you know you're going to eat more food right now and more variety and maybe things you haven't let yourself have. But that doesn't mean that you're out of control, that you're doing it wrong. But it's safe to say that probably all of us who start to eat more freely, and I don't mean an out of control emotional eye, you know, it's like, well, I didn't do, do this intuitive eating thing right, so screw it. I'm going to eat everything and, and feel sick all the time. We're not suggesting that. I'm not suggesting that. What I'm saying is um, we do have to, like, barring anything that immediately is going to, that's, you know, physically hurting you, then, you know, don't, I, I wouldn't limit yourself. Like, let yourself have this period of time where you relearn how to make these foods neutral again versus, okay, well, I'll do some permission, but I must be doing it wrong because all I want to eat is Oreos. Well, now maybe you just need to eat Oreos for a while until they're less special. Again, I've done videos about Oreos, how I didn't eat vid um, fruit and vegetables for like six months. So if you're interested in all that, they're definitely here on Facebook in the archives and the videos or um, on my YouTube channel. They're there too. Um, and you can you can Google that, like didn't eat fruit and vegetables for six months or... Um, um, eating all the Oreos, I think that's on there too. So anyway, there's lots of examples I put, but um, I just want to let you know that there's not out of controlness about eating with more permission. Is just um, giving yourself the self care and support you need as you're doing it, so you don't scare yourself into believing that you're messing up or doing something wrong. If you're not sure, I highly recommend that you work with somebody who can guide you through this. Um, and kind of be like a help you be kind of a life jacket in it so you feel like you're not so alone in it please get that but also know that um oh i guess what i want to say about it is that it it's not going to last forever this is just the beginning phase where you eat all the foods your brain's going to yell and scream at you that you're doing something wrong because it's still diet brain and the more you can bring compassion and curiosity to it you're going to learn a lot. You're going to learn it like, oh, I do like Oreos, but, you know, I don't like them as much as I thought I did. Or I do still like them, but I don't want them all the time. Or whatever food it is. You know, whatever the food is. Um, i trying to think of anything else to say about that. It's just hang in there. Let your body guide this. And if it doesn't feel like your body, you know, okay, is this, like, is, that, is this actually hunger? Is this actually, like, I really want this? Or is it that... I'm afraid that if I don't eat it, I'm dieting again, or I'm afraid that um, I'm not going to be doing this right if I, um, um, you know, eat dessert more than once a day or whatever. It, it doesn't look the same for everybody, and it takes as long as it takes. I will say, though, to if you need to shorten or want to shorten the time, is the less often you can run back to trying to fix it with food restriction, the faster it'll go. Okay, so I hope this video was helpful just to kind of reassure you that it's worth the effort. Hang in there. Put some support in your day around finding your feet, um, getting grounded, recognizes the temporary space and time you're in, um, honestly, if we don't fight it so much. Okay, so thank you so much for joining and watching live if you did. If not, I will be seeing you all really soon. Take care. Bye-bye.